Father, we bless you. We thank you again for who you are. We declare your goodness, your glory, your mercy in this place. God, you have been good to us. And for that, we are ever grateful. We thank you, Father, now for this specific opportunity where we bless this offering, God. Your word says that you will open up the windows and doors of heaven and pour us out blessings that we would not have room enough to receive them. And it's all contingent upon the fact that we are obedient to your word. And so, Lord, we recognize and realize that everything that we have comes from you. And we're just giving back a portion of that which is already yours. So, Lord, we thank you for those who have given, and we bless you for those who had a desire to give but did not have. We pray that you would use this offering for your kingdom's purpose. It is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray and ask it all. Amen.
Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. The Lord is good, isn't he? Anybody in here come to worship? Who in here came to worship? That's look, if you didn't come, if you didn't come for worship, I'm gonna pray for you because we came to worship. We came to worship. If you didn't come here to worship, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here because I just want you to sit next to somebody who came to worship. And I guarantee that the fire that they have will reach next to you and will light you up. It's all about being thankful to the Lord. It's all about being grateful for his blessings. It's all about recognizing that he is God and God all by himself. There's none like him. The Bible says it like this, who, oh God, is like you? There's none like him in all the earth. We serve an awesome God who sits high and he looks low. That's why the choir was just singing, God is fighting for us. He's pushing back the darkness. He's lighting up the kingdom that could not be shaken. It's in the name of Jesus that the devil is defeated. All we got to do is just shout it out. That's why I said we come to worship. Because if we know the fact that whatever we go through, all we have to do is just praise him by shouting it out. Because knowing that God is fighting for us. Look, the people of the Bible knew that even in the Old Testament. Isaiah said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And so he knew that God was fighting for him. That God was pushing back the darkness and lighting up the kingdom. His kingdom. That cannot be shaken by anything or anyone. And so Isaiah began to shout it out. And I'm believing that Paul believed the same thing because in Romans chapter 8, he says this, I am convinced that death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things to come will ever be able to separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Paul went through some stuff, but he knew that he served a God who was fighting for him, pushing back the darkness. He understood that he was going to go through some stuff, but yet he resolved to shout it out. I need to talk to my young people. Look, you're going to go through some stuff in your life. We've experienced it. We're experiencing it right now, but we want you to know that you have some help that's available. All you got to do is believe and receive and know that the Lord is fighting for you. So we come to worship. <laughs> we ju we're just here to worship. That's, that's all we're here for. We're just here to worship. We just want to worship. Knowing that the Lord is fighting for us. Knowing that the battle's not mine, but his. Knowing that it's a fixed fight. <laughs> I might get some bumps and bruises and some scars, but in the end, we win. And so all we got to do is worship. All we have to do is worship. Yes, we're going to have some ups and downs. Yes, we're going to have some disappointments. Yes, we're going to lose loved ones. Yes, we will. Yes, we'll lose jobs. Let's, yes, we'll lose friends. Yes, we won't have any money. Yes, there won't be any food. Yes, we won't know where our next meal will come. But guess what? We serve a God who's fighting for you. And he's worthy of the praise. And so that's why I just, I just like to remind us why we come. We come to worship. And I want us to stay in that spirit of worship. That's where, that's where our praise team has been leading us. That's, we're in worship. <laughs> and so we don't want to forget that. And so we just thank God for simply who he is. He's the great and awesome God. There's none like him in all the earth. So let's stay in that spirit of worship. As we get ready for some prayer, let's pray, let's pray. That's still worship. That's still worship. 
You know why it's worship? Because we're coming to God. We're lifting our voices to him. We're thanking him for his goodness. And then he says, just pour your heart out. And he hears and answers prayer. So that's why we're here. Well, let's get ready for some worship. As we're, as we're getting ready, I want to remind you of some prayer concerns. Um, we have a number of prayer concerns, and, and we want to pray for them. I'm asking that you continue to pray for Tyrone Johnson. Keep him lifted up in prayer. Miss Emma Davis, Miss Evelyn Hunt, uh, Miss Catherine Ross, uh, Miss Catherine Surf, Miss Miss B Logan, all of them, the Makins. We have been praying. Pray for all of our senior members, Miss uh, Mrs. Mitchell and Mrs. Loretta Miller and and, and Miss Rosa Doris, Miss Gracie Foster, Rosemary Banks. Look, those are just the names that we have constantly been praying for. And we want to continue to pray for them. And we thank God for all of our senior members, Mrs. Irma Green, Mrs. Hattie, who sits back here, 97, 98 years old, and still getting around, making her way out to, out to the house of worship. Miss Level, uh, Miss Minister Mays, Elder Weed, and keep them lifted up in prayer. We thank God for our senior members, and we're grateful. Deacon Thompson right over there. Mother Dolly over there. I know I'm going to hear it later, but I, I'm, I'm still going to mention you because, yes, amen. <laughs> That's okay. But we thank God for all of those. And then we want to pray for those families that are in bereavement. Look, we've had a number of, of, of people in this ministry that family members have passed away. And so we want to keep them lifted up. We want to pray for the family of Sister Ida Collins. Um, that's, that's Tommy Collins, Kenyatta, Larry Kenyatta, um, Upchurch, um, Mrs. Goler, that's her sister, Deacon Goler, her sister-in-law, Miss Mary Martin, cousin, um, Miss Suzetta Motley, that's her cousin. She just passed away, and so her funeral is going to be this coming Friday here at the church, and so we want to pray for that family. Then also, Sister Jane Laxherd had a family member, um, Sean English, passed away. And so a uh, young man, so we want to keep their family lifted up in prayer. Also, we want to pray for Sister Denise Perkins. Her, sis her sister passed away. And so we want to keep um, them lifted up in prayer. I spoke to her this morning and prayed for her. And she just asked to, just to pray a special request for their family that her daughter can be here at the funeral. So we just want to, I, just, I told her we would join with her in prayer. And then... The Roberts Lewis family right down the street. Um, we want to keep them lifted up in prayer. There are a host of family family members. The Wolf family just eulogized Brother Foster Wolf yesterday. And so uh, we want to keep them lifted up in prayer. So there are, I know, I know there are a number of people that we've been praying for that lost loved ones. And we want to continue to pray for the bereaved family. So please let us do that. And we will. Um, lift you up and take you to the Lord in prayer. At this time, we're going to have our altar workers come forward. As they're moving forward, you may know that you need specific individualized prayer. And if that's you and you know you need some prayer, just come and stand in front of one of these altar workers. They're ready and willing to pray with you and for you, whatever your challenge may be. So if that's you, if that's you, just come and stand in front of one of these altar workers. Tell them your concern, and they will pray with you and for you. I do ask that those that remain in the audience, if you can stand, please stand and join us in a spirit of prayer. Thank you. To come to the altar. And when you come to the altar, it's not necessarily about needing somebody to pray for you. You just need somebody to pray with you. You don't have to feel like, I know you can pray, but it's important sometimes in some matters to have somebody in, to touch and agree. I'm going to make mention that Minister Michael Ross has a surgery coming up on Friday, and so we want to add her to our list of prayer. Minister Betty Robertson, I don't know, she um, has been on my heart. Thanking God for her, we're going to continue to pray. And if you are here in the audience and you feel led to just kind of go and lay your hands on somebody's shoulder, ask them, pray for them with them, please feel free um, in this space to talk to our daddy together. 
Well, we come to you, Daddy. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We lift your name in this place. So grateful for your presence. <laughs> we promise that if we would set the atmosphere, if we would seek you, if we would desire you, that you would show up. And we know that you are everywhere all the time. But we want more of you. That was our prayer this morning when we opened up. We want more of your presence. And we thank you, God. Your word tells us that you are looking for the worshiper. Seeking those who will worship you in spirit and in truth. And we know really that that means if we just begin to lift you, that you'll come and you'll, you'll find us and you'll dwell with us and you'll be with us. Thank you, God, for your presence in this place. Ah, God, I don't know if your people... Remember that your word says that in your presence there's a fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are treasures forevermore. So even though we, we just want to bless you and thank you for what you've already done, you just that, that kind of God, just such a giving God that when, you, when we worship you and you show up, you continue to give more and more. We already experience your presence, but you said, I got more for you. There is more in store, God. What an amazing Father. Thank you, God. Nothing like being in your presence. And so we thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit in this place. The reminder that we have victory in you. With that victory, God, with that declaration, with that truth and that authority, we come bringing these names to you, God. You said we can come boldly to your throne. And so we come boldly, we come boldly in the name of Jesus, lifting up the families and lifting up situations God we pray Father God for those who have lost loved ones I see family members sprinkled all over this sanctuary lost loved ones yet they press their way to the house of God we lift them to you right now in the name of Jesus thank you God that you promised that if we'd show up you'd be here you'd meet us you'd show yourself to us and so we thank you God for that we pray God for the family of Ida Collins of church we pray for the family again of uh, 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 Foster Wolf. We pray, Father God, for the Sean English family, Miss Jane and her family members. We lift them. We pray for Sister Denise Perkins and her family and the loss of her sister. We pray for the Roberts, Lewis, our friends down the street. God, we lift them to you. I pray for peace. I know, I know, I know how busy the enemy gets when, we, when there's death in the family. The enemy wants to come in. The word was true. You said that he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Division is what he comes to do. But we speak unity and life and peace and joy and strength and love in each of these families right now in the name of Jesus, God. Be with them and comfort them as only you can, God. God, we pray for Tyrone Johnson. We pray for Miss Emma. Continue to lift them to you. We continue to lift up. Miss Evelyn Hunt, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for Minister Betty Robertson, God. Just, just need to say thank you. Hallelujah. Daddy, thank you. Keep on doing what you're doing. We pray for our senior members. We love them so much, God. Those who are here today, we thank you that they are here. We give you praise, God. I don't see Miss Stills, and I know she left early, but we lift her to you, God. Pray for those who are homebound. We pray for those in nursing homes, God. We lift them and pray for your peace. We pray for your joy. We pray for your healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you for their contributions. Help us, God, to love them better. Help us to love them better in the name of Jesus. Pray for my sister, Michael, God. Thank you for the opportunity for healing and wholeness. Thank you for the doctors and all that they know to do. But ultimately, God, we bless you because you are the healer. We declare the healing right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. God, we pray for every need at this altar. So grateful that you see what we don't see and you know what we don't know and you can do what we can't do and you can go where we can't go. You know all about it, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would move, your spirit would move in every circle and then up and down all of the pews, in and out of the seats, meeting every need in the house as only you can. God, you're able to do it. And we thank you for it, God. That quiet concerns, 
those private requests. Meet them in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you. And then we pray for Pastor Rob, God. We thank you so much for his leadership, God. Thank you, Father God, for the vision that you've given him. Thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing in his personal and private life, his time with you, that coveted quality time at your feet and in your face. God, I pray that it is richer, that it is greater, that it is deeper, and that it is higher than it's ever been. We thank you. Thank you for Pastor Jackson. Never want to forget to lift him. He's laid such a wonderful foundation because of your spirit at work in him. So we lift him. We pray for restoration. We know you're able, no matter what our eyes see, no matter what it looks like, you're able to do the impossible. Your word said it, and we know it's true exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think you are able. And so we lift him and Miss Donna in the name of Jesus. Finally, God, so grateful that you sent a messenger today. So grateful for this woman of God who is coming to impart the word of God in this place. Know that you've been working on her. Know that you've been working in her, God. And we thank you for the word you have already declared in her. You speak the word to the messenger first. You give them the word. And it works in them and then they deliver it to us. So thank you for the word at work in Pastor Denise. We open our hearts and our minds and our spirits now to receive the word that you had. It's a word from you to us. We're grateful for the messenger, but we don't want to forget it's, it's a word from you to us. We receive the word of God in this place in the name of Jesus. Fill her. Use her. Work in and through her, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. God, we give you praise in this place. Thank you for what you've already done and what you're going to do, God. We give you praise. We give you honor. We declare our healing and our victory in advance. For every prayer request that's gone forth, we declare it done. And we will bless you. We will praise you. We will give you glory in advance. Before we see it, we're going to praise you. And we thank you for it, God. We love you, Daddy. We give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Our speaker of the hour, and I am excited to do so. I want you to know that um, I don't know what all God is going to say and do through her today, but I do want you to know that we had asked uh, Pastor Denise to impart some words during our watch night service, you guys remember. And I asked her to, to say something toward the end. Um, and she had some stuff that God had given her to say to us. But I was not clear um, to let her know that even if we were at midnight, go on and do what the Lord said. So she wasn't sure. And, you know, she is very um, reverent in somebody else's church and she was wanted to be mindful of the time and all those things and so I wasn't clear I was ready I was up here ready um, and so she gave a little bit enough to get us going and then we were like oh. but it wasn't her fault so Pastor Rob and I were like we don't want to wait so we took her to, to dinner one evening after that and said give us give us the rest of it we wanted it but as you know God did use that word and it had already been working on Pastor Rob and he has talk from the text and I don't know what she's going to do today but I'm just excited to hear whatever and all that God will deliver I already know he's been working in her and on her so you know I have a bio I, I, I know she would not want me to read it all but it is amazing um, so, some of the things she's so humble you wouldn't know some of the things she has done she has been traveled um, many places internationally done ministry still serving faithfully in international ministry 
Um, of course, you know that she was married over 40 years to uh, Bishop S. Michael Milben, who passed away recently. We've been praying for her and her church family and her family through that. An amazing man of God, a pillar in our community of righteousness and holiness and love for all people. Just an amazing uh, pastor and leader and man in our, not just to his church, but leader in our in our community, and so you know that. She's written some books, a couple of books. I don't know if you knew that, um, but just so many accolades and so many things that we could say, but I just wanna tell you that I know her personally, and she has prayed for me personally. She's prayed for my family. She was actually Wani's third grade teacher at Longfellow. She's an educator um, by training and profession, and she also, Caleb is in the back. I think she was Caleb's third grade teacher as well, and I can tell you when, when Wani, and I knew Wani was going to have Pastor Denise, I was so excited. You know, I, Pastor Denise is one of them teachers who had to take the oil and praying over the, I already knew, praying over the desk. You know, I, I don't know if that was the same year my son tried to grow an afro, and, and his grades kind of start slipping, and we went to the school to see what was going on. Y'all, he never had afro before. He had lotion, and grease, and a pick in his, we, uh, we knew what was going on. You so worried about that little afro? Your grades are slipping. So his daddy took him home. No more Afro. Afro was gone. Get focused. I just dropped that in. I don't know if that was the year he had you. But I mean, just an amazing, amazing, humble, holy, powerful woman of God that I'm glad I know. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God. And, I, and, and what God has done in, in just bringing our churches. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, you people don't even understand, but I, I, t I take it personally. I'm just telling, I've been a little selfish about it. I said, God did this for me so that I can get closer. And, and I told her kids and her church members, I'm, I'm going to pull. As long as she let me pull, I'm going to pull from her. If she is close in the building, I'm going to pull. I'm going to pull. I'm a little selfish about that, so you had to push me back. But I want us to stand on our feet yeah, yeah, and honor her now. Yeah, yeah. Is she going to come now? Come on, y'all. Let's stand. Let's give God praise for this mighty. Hallelujah. Now, it's his gift. She belongs to him. She wouldn't want all this, but we're praising him for his gift. Yes, to her church, but also to this church in this city, in this community, and beyond. Let's give God praise for Pastor Denise S. Milben in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, have your way, God. Have your way, have your way. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. That was way overdone. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. I want to give honor to Pastor Robert Scaife. Oh, you can do better than that. And his beautiful wife, Minister Walisha Skate. It's an honor to be in the pulpit with you. Thank you so much. And I want to honor our pastor, Terrell Jones, and his wife are here today. You know, it's amazing to me how God does things. And, and some things you just don't understand. You just never will but you trust God. And so he's working. We haven't got a clue what he's doing. <laughs> but we know he's working. And, and, and if we stay close to him,